My name is Jonathan Schaefer, and I'm a senior scientist in product development at Kyogen. And what I would like to discuss with you today is circulating microRNAs in human plasma. MicroRNAs hold great promise for both disease detection and monitoring, and continually growing evidence associates circulating microRNA with both normal and disease biology. Equally important is that microRNAs are expressed in virtually all fluids, including being very robustly expressed in serum and plasma. So you may ask, how are microRNAs protected from degradation in serum and plasma? And there's a variety of mechanisms by which they're protected, but the two major ones are being complexed by either AGO2 or encapsulated in microvesicles or exosomes. And whether they're complex with proteins or encapsulated in exosomes is tied to biology, and being able to distinguish between the two um, subgroups is very important in understanding biological signatures. And this brings us to today's poster, again regarding circulating microRNAs in human plasma. So for today's poster, what we'll be comparing is the total fraction of microRNA in human plasma, and also the fraction present in exosomes or microvesicles. To do this, we'll be using a direct lysis method, ultracentrifugation, and a new product that Kyogen has developed, the ExoRNAsy Serum Plasma Maxi Kit. And this ExoRNAsy Serum Plasma Maxi Kit follows a very nice workflow. You first bind your vesicles to the membrane and wash. You then use Kyazol lysis and release the RNA. You then perform a phenochloroform extraction, followed by ethanol conditioning, and binding to the RNAsy min elute column. Finally, you elute your ultra pure RNA. This procedure is very quick. It takes approximately 50 minutes, and that's from going from isolated serum and plasma to isolated RNA. You can very quickly see how this method is very promising and holds great potential for microvesicle and exosome isolation. So the first question that you may ask is, how does the ExoRNAsy method compare to ultracentrifugation, which has been traditionally considered the gold standard for isolation of microvesicles? So what we did, we have a pellet of exosomes using ultracentrifugation and the pellet of exosomes using the ExoEasy. And we perform scanning electron microscopy. And what you can see is that while you see microvesicles or exosomes of the expected size in both fractions, you see a much purer fraction using the ExoRNAsy. The vesicles are of the expected size and shape and at the same time, you see also other vesicles of irregular shape and also background proteins that are present in the ultracentrifugation, but not in the ExoEasy. So in summary for this portion, the ExoEasy is very quick, it's very fast, and it also provides you with a much cleaner prep than the traditional ultracentrifugation. Now let's move on to discussing whether or not what you have on the ExoEasy columns is actually, actually microvesicles. So to test this, we conducted four different treatments. We have uh, no RNAs and no Triton added. We have Triton added, but not RNAs. And what this would do is simply, with just Triton being present, destabilize the lipid bilayers. Our next condition is where we have only RNAs one being added, without the destabilization due to Triton. In the final fourth condition, we have a treatment of both RNase-1 and Triton. So you'll have destabilization of the lipid bilayer, but also then degradation of any nucleic acids that are present. And what we did for each of the three treatment conditions is compare it in PCR signal to the mock treatment where we did not use RNase-1 or Triton. And as you can see, by simply adding the Triton to destabilize the lipid bilayer, or if you will, your exosomes, that you do see slight decrease of the signal of both common mRNAs and microRNAs. This can be simply due to carryover of residual RNAs from the serum or plasma. However, if you do not destabilize your lipid bilayer and just add RNAs, your level is quite comparable to the mock treatment. What this suggests is that what you are uh, including on the membrane is being protected by microvesicles or exosomes. Only when you add the Triton to destabilize the lipid bilayer and additional RNAs do you see complete degradation of the mRNAs and microRNAs. 
what this suggests is that what you are including on the ExoEasy column is protected in microvesicles and exosomes. So what we're testing here is how are the vesicles protecting the microRNAs and an extension mRNAs in your serum and plasma. So to test this, we looked at two microRNAs that are outside of vesicles. So these would be just complex to AGO2 or an other protective protein. And at the same time, we are looking at two microRNAs that are inside vesicles. So in serum and plasma, these would be protected from degradation by being included in microvesicles or exosomes. So to test the sensitivity to proteinase K, we traded the uh, serum or plasma samples with proteinase K for 30 minutes, and then we performed the exo-easy isolation procedure. And what you can see, the PCR levels are 100% for the mock treatments for the microRNAs outside of the vesicles. But when you perform the proteinase K treatment, the signal drops to zero. So what this means is that the proteinase K is digesting the associated proteins and allowing the microRNAs to be subsequently degraded by the nucleases present in the serum or plasma. Now in contrast, we have our microRNAs that are present in microvesicles or exosomes. And as you can see, they should be very well protected from proteinase K because they're not associated with proteins. And when you perform the proteinase K treatment, the signal mock versus proteinase K is quite comparable. And what this means is that these microRNAs are being protected from degradation because they are not complexed with AGO2 or other protective proteins. Now on to our last panel. So you may be asking, what is the microRNA distribution in the general serum or plasma versus just the exosome specific fraction? And to test this, we were looking at what would be considered to be inside your exosomes. So this was looking at uh, isolation with either exoRNAsy or ultracentrifugation. We then have direct lysis, which direct lysis means you simply are lysing everything in your serum or plasma. Your exosomes, your microvesicles, your AGO2 complex microRNAs, and microRNAs complex to other protective proteins. And last, we have what would be considered outside of the vesicles. So to accomplish this, we performed the exo-easy isolation, but liberated the RNA in the first flow through. So normally this is just the wash, and you're not um, looking at the microRNAs that are in your exosomes or microvesicles. And looking at the chart, if you look at the flow through or the direct lysis, the box plots are quite similar. What this suggests is that the direct lysis is again liberating everything and you only have the flow through. So the majority of the microRNAs are outside of exosomes. And this is further substantiated by the fact when you look at what is inside of exosomes, the box plots are skewed uh, a little bit delayed. And what this suggests is that the signal is lower inside the exosomes. And quite comparably, whether you're using exoRNAsy or ultracentrifugation, the signal is quite comparable for microRNAs. And in a different manner, we have an MA plot where we look at magnitude versus abundance. And we have the abundance on the x-axis and the magnitude on the y-axis. Anything below zero would be outside of vesicles. Anything above zero would be inside of vesicles. And as we can see, the majority of the signal is actually outside of vesicles and we've also detected microRNAs that have been published to be both outside and inside. We have MIR-92A3P and MIR-16-5P that are traditionally thought to be predominantly outside of exosomes. And at the same time, LET7A5P and MIR-142-3P are inside of exosomes, and we've again reproducibly detected this. And collectively, this makes sense with what's suggested in literature. More than 90% of signals are associated with ribonucleoprotein complexes, which would mean that they're not in exosomes. And again, this mirrored in our results that for microRNA detection, most of the microRNAs are outside of exosomes, while a smaller, more specific fraction is inside of the exosomes. Now you may be asking, what microRNA should I look at? Should I only look at the exosome derived or should I look at the microRNAs either in the total fraction or outside of the exosome? 
And the answer is it truly depends on your research and your specific treatment conditions. And what we are providing you with is solutions to find whatever answer that you're looking for that is best associated with your experimental setup. So in conclusion, Microvesicles or exosomes carry a very small defined portion of microRNAs and we're able to efficiently use exoRNAs to separate this specific defined fraction. In addition, the exoRNAs is quite comparable to your ultracentrifugation results. And just as a reminder, the exoRNAs is a very quick, rapid procedure that does not require any specialized equipment. Finally, what again microRNA should you be looking at? Should you be only looking at your defined extracellular microvesicles, or should you look at your protein complex or the total fraction? And in summary, it really depends on your specific experimental system and treatment conditions. I'd like to thank you for your attention and have a great day.